Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Big CEO energy. C- <laughs> Caroline Wonga, CEO of Essence. Woo! Welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Thank I'm you. I'm so glad you made it up here before Essence Festival because I want you to talk about everything that's happening yeah. this year. And you guys just dropped the iconic cover with Listen, Janet Jackson. That That's a life moment right there, right? Like, it's not even about an essence cover with Janet. It's about Janet, right? right? And and what what she is and everything that she's been for community, the things she's fought through that gave a lot of other artists opportunity to be here. And I would say that's exactly what Essence Festival is about, if we want to be honest about it, right? One of the things I've said a lot about Essence Festival is that it's, it's critically important that people understand that it is the place where we celebrate blackness without having to accommodate everybody else. Mm, I love that. Right? It is the It is the place where we get to come. Everybody's welcome. But we don't have to worry about explaining something to somebody or not doing too much because they're going to think we can't be intelligent and have fun at the same time, that we mm-hmm. can't gather and not be violent and all the other stereotypes out there about us. And so Janet being an icon makes sense. She's a part of the festival, but it's also about just being really honest about what blackness is mm. and not having to feel like you got to lessen it for others, but letting others be a part of it if they want to. But it's their job to understand how we do what we do. The festival is so amazing. I have so, a, I have so much fun each and every year that we go. Yeah. Um, and when I first started going, it was it was a lot smaller, right? Yeah. And it, it, to see how big it's grown and, and how many people and how many corporations sponsor and yeah. how many activations... It's just, it's so much fun. And it's so much fun to see so many black people in one place just having a Say good it. time. Say it. And, and it's just black excellence. So so tell us how that, that started and when did it start? So the, the festival's 27 years old. Wow. Right? So it's 27 years old. So it was about halfway through Essence's overall existence that the festival came about. It's always been in New Orleans. And I have to reinforce that because the festival isn't the festival if it's not in New Orleans. Right. It actually has always been in New Orleans except for three years. Yeah, I went I went the one year it was in Houston after... Uh, Do you want to talk about how you felt about that? I didn't like this. Exactly. <laughs> As did nobody else did. Right. Like, right. it just it doesn't work. And that's not hate on Houston. That's just about, like, yeah. it. they were born together, right? And then the only other two years that hasn't been there are the two years of the pandemic, pandemic. where we did it virtually. Mm-hmm. And so they are interconnected. That mm-hmm. cultural currency that is New Orleans is what makes festival dope. We could put all them people in a different stadium, nobody would go, right? It is also the largest festival in the country by per day attendance. It doesn't matter what other festival you're talking about, they have multiple days, and so if you add up the days, you have it. But when we talk about half a million people for 27 years have live gathered in New Orleans, you can't find another one that does that that then is just about us and our culture. And then the third piece I'd say is what happened. what's happening right now that I'm even more excited about is what COVID gave us the opportunity to do virtually, was to be able to bring together a broader diaspora Mm. to experience this thing that we have had here in the U.S., but is really about global black culture, which is a part of our mission in this phase of essence as well. And so in 2020, we had 45 million views of the virtual festival. In 2021, we had 65 million views. And 2022, for the first time, the festival will be both live and virtual with unique and hybrid experiences for all. So when you think about the momentous moment we're in right now with what we've been through, this is going to be the dopest year of the festival yet because the whole fam can be together even if we're not in the same That's one thing I loved about the festival. When I was a kid, and no disrespect to the, to the festival, it was None. an older person's festival. Listen, you and can say that. And then y'all started skewing younger, That's and right. it was open to everybody. That's, right. just, That's what that he just, thinks. He no, just, it's he, the truth. He, he, just, he, old, he just older now. <laughs> <laughs> now I, will, no, no. I will say the movie no, Girls, even younger. before the movie Girls Trip, like for me, because I've been going to Essence Festival for oh, probably like 10 years. Yeah. In a row, and even before, there was one time I went with, um, I did this thing with Pebbles. Mm-hmm. I think you guys remember that because we had her up here. She was hosting this, like, finding the next big R&B star thing. And so I got hired, and that was my first time going. And after that, I was like, this is amazing. And I would tell, like, my friends, let's all go to Essence Festival yeah. every year. Yeah. And then Girls Trip came out. Yeah, and it's like, it is the perfect Girls Trip place. But you here's, know? so that's, that's great. And I'm glad you guys brought this up because one of the things, right, like, so, Essence is the parent company of the festival, right? Mm -hmm. There's like a whole company aside from that. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that is really intentional about what we're trying to drive in this stage is we are, first of all, black people are not a monolith. Mm -hmm. Whether that's about generational, whether that's about identity, whether that's about how we show up, whatever that is, we're not a monolith. And this festival is the place where no matter what kind of black you are, you find something for you. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So to your point, it had a reputation of being not just for old, but for the aunties. That's what people really say. Mm -hmm. Right. This is for the aunties that come in there all white and do their annual trip. And then they, you know, they go see Frankie Beverly and May's clothes and they move on with their life and they come back again next year. When did that change? It's been changing for a while, yeah. but we are being even more intentional about it now. So right now, if you look at the statistics, 60 percent of the attendees of the festival are 18 to 35. Mm hmm. That's what, I was right. That's what I was saying. The whole they just thing. may not go to the same things right. Right, right? that other people do. And so our charge became, how do we make sure that all of the people that are actually showing up can find something to do? So to start with something like you talked about with Girls Trip, one of the things is we know the brothers come to festival. The data says it's about 30 percent of men that come of the audience is men that come really to smart festival. for them to come to by the way because there's a lot i mean of I, i've never heard a complaint about their experience <laughs> exactly. but but the piece i'm saying that for is the intentionality is for the first time we have a men's experience designed for black men at festival we're calling it in his zone it's designed for black men there it's not because the rest of the festival isn't for them but we see them and recognize them and want them to feel like there's a space where they'll be able to do things we have a younger generational set of programming behind girls united mm -hmm. that's really focused on the next generation of black women right, who may felt that they weren't in the auntie group, right, are trying to figure out what does this brand mean for me and want to have the same experiences, but what they're gonna spend their time doing is gonna be different than the folks that are gonna spend different times. We are the Essence Festival of Culture and there's a lot of other things happening outside of the Superdome, but even within the Superdome and the concerts, which is what a lot of people look forward to, there's a lot of diversity in what we've brought there. So we've got Nicki Minaj on Friday night, we've got Janet on Saturday night, new edition on Sunday night as headliners, but in the Nicki Minaj night is Thames. I'm sorry, it's Beanie Man. Thames is in the new edition night, right? And so we've got all these mixes. Beanie Man over here? We got Beanie Man gonna be, you didn't know? Y'all got that's Beanie amazing. Man there. Right? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. As his witch kid, this as be his the first time Beanie yep. Man has been in the country for you like six, seven years. And somehow it became worth it. Those are all grown wow. artists, by the right. way. Right. No, Nicki Minaj. Yeah. <laughs> Nicki Minaj is grown. Well, Tim, Tim is pretty new. Tim is Tim new. Is new. Tim is new. new. Kids are new. City is new. Yeah. City right. girls new. Right. And so the, the point that I'm making is part of our responsibility as a brand is to make sure that although we were built on the heels of who black women are, and we are not at all hiding that, the reason why that's a really important critical community for all black is because black women are the conductors of, of black community. Right. The way that they look and the way that they go and what they influence tends to be right. What a lot of people depend on or look to to understand the mothers of civilization. Mm -hmm. They're the mothers of civilization. They're the they're the mothers of home culture and community, not just black home culture and community. Right. And so being able to use the festival and the brand that is essence to bring forth what it means for blackness to get back to the greatness it deserves globally is exactly what we're trying to do. And that mission is that big, that audacious. And we will start by making sure that people see a different kind of festival this year that helps us into our new. Now, era. what about Essence Eats? I'm excited what for that. What you want to know about Essence Eats? So Essence Eats has always been there. Some of mm -hmm. the dope stuff that's happening with Essence Eats is we took it outside and we're doing the first ever Essence Food and Wine Festival that will feature food and wine from all different black vendors that are there to be able to have that experience. Everybody may not want to come to the food festival, so of course the eats will be there as well, but it is about making sure that food and wine festival is happening, the film festival is happening, we have a gospel brunch that we're including, to make sure that people are finding different things to do, but that we're also highlighting black entrepreneurs, because one of our big goals is to continue to build black generational wealth. And so where we can have black brands sit at the forefront, we want to make sure that happens. And then the comedy aspect of it with Guy comedy Terry. aspect is like, great. Why do I feel like I have all this information? You do, I'm and you're doing a great job. Year. You're listing the schedule. So the, before I talk about Guy, let me talk about Thursday, where Kevin Hart is doing one of the stops on his show on that Thursday night. So Essence hasn't typically had big programming on Thursday night. So he will do that on Thursday night from a comedy perspective. And then we've oh, got... Closer these, to the mic, basically. Sorry, closer mm -hmm. to the mic. So we have what's happening on Thursday from a... Kevin Hart is coming to do his show there in the Smoothie King Stadium. And then we've got After Darks. And one of those is going to be a comedy After Dark that Guy Tori helped curate for us that we're really excited about. The other one will be Afro Beats, which I'm particularly mm -hmm. excited yes. about because a lot of my favorite artists show up within that. I How mean, does it feel to be excited. back after a, a, a two-year hiatus? And when, 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 you, when you realize, okay, I think we'd be able to do this live yeah. next year, when did your brain start? Well, <laughs> well, the funny thing is I started this job in the pandemic. So I started this job right when the... 2020 virtual festival was about to air, right? And I, like everybody else, was like, can we do this? Is it going to be the same? Will we be able to deliver, right? And when we saw what happened with 45 million views of that festival, I, like, I rested quite a bit to say, oh, my God, right? Like, the necessity of this thing goes beyond the fact that it has to be physical. Our community needs to be together. We gather. That's who we've been since the beginning of time. We gather, we tell stories, we celebrate, we engage, right? And so when we were able to do that in, in 2020 and then saw us able to do it again in 2021, the, the thought coming back live 
became probably bigger and better than it would have been mm -hmm. had the pandemic not happened, which is look at what we're now able to do. Mm -hmm. And we decided to be even more bold and audacious in how we choose to offer this live festival because of what happened virtually. Right. So the idea of making sure the diaspora is represented, the idea of making sure we have virtual experiences only that are unique to the people who want to do virtual, we have some that are live and then we have some that are hybrid for those that are together, gave us an opportunity to dream about starting earlier, connecting everybody that wants to be a part of this thing versus just those that can come live and working our way towards getting the other. So being absent and coming back live, our absence proved that there's so much more potential we can do with this thing. And so we came in audacious, like, let's go ahead and just start doing what we need to do. There's also innovation we had to hold off on to be able to bring to this festival. We couldn't do it in 20 and 2021. So Technology Hub, Health Hub, all the things we're doing there are things that have been in the backlog. So we also felt unleashed to be able to bring some of those things forward. The first time I seen uh, New Edition was actually at Essence Music Festival. Uh -huh. Was it? Dope. And, you know, most people don't know, I do car shows. And my car show got its start. Most people don't know. Who the hell don't know you Come do on, car Nancy, shows? Well, who didn't know? Well, yeah. You know what got, <laughs> you hear it every day. <laughs> I mean, most people don't know. So the one person that didn't know, they not know. <laughs> most people don't know I have kids. No, I was saying, most people don't know that the start, I got my start because Essence didn't happen. So I actually did my car show. When I found out Essence wasn't doing it 4th of July, I did my car show 4th of July in, in Atlanta. Fascinating. And usually, you know, our culture, black people, they they want something to do. And because they couldn't go to New Orleans, yeah. I had 20,000 people at Atlanta, which yeah. made me do the car shows from market to market to market. So that was my, you guys helped me out, you guys don't even know, but that was the reason <laughs> why it did so well in Atlanta. And that's what made me say, I'm gonna do every market, every city. Yeah. But I was gonna ask, is it difficult for you guys to get sponsors? Because I know a lot of times this corporate white world is hard to get sponsors. They don't. They'll sponsor everything else, but when it comes to us, it's very difficult. Is it difficult? For so us? we gonna have that conversation. So Absolutely. first of all, here's what you need to know. I am in corporate recovery, so I worked at the Target Corporation for 15 years, right? So I know both sides of the conversation. Here's what I will give you as a really straight answer. There, mm -hmm. one of the one of the things that will be true in this new era of the Essence brand overall is we're going to be really picky about who gets to be in partnership with us. Mm. I think that this brand has been through a lot of things over its 50 years, and there was a time when it was so malnourished by the organization it sat within that it had to take what it could get to stay alive because we were not going to not deliver to the culture, and Michelle Ebanks did a lot of work to make sure that that happened, but it was not in a good place. As I came into role and partnered with Rich Dennis, who is the family that put this, or this company back in black-owned hands, what became extremely important to both of us was, one, changing the, va the way that the value of what we do as a brand is looked at, festival included. Mm -hmm. Number two, demanding that if you want to be in, rep in relationship with this brand, you have to be about black economic impact, period. If you're not about that, we will happily help you put your check somewhere else. Mm. And that's not, that's not lip service. That's honest. Right. And so in any other scenario, you could wonder if we had an issue getting sponsors. In our scenario, here's what actually happened. Because we were going through the revaluing of what this brand is and what it really means to be able to be with black culture, but not get out of it what you need and not give back to it what it needs. Mm -hmm. Right. And the fact that we were unapologetic about that and were willing to walk away if partners didn't want to be about that led to us being able to have record level partnership dollars happening coming into the 2022 festival. But what's more important is as we engaged with those partners, what we said is it isn't just about us getting the dollars to be able to put this together. We mandated in a lot of those relationships that they are using black owned businesses to drive the way they show up at festival and made that be in the contracts. That's not dollars that comes to essence to put this on. That's the people that will be setting up activations and selling food and all these things that each of our partners do there. We ask that that is also going to black owned businesses and try to make sure that that happens mm. because for us, we don't want any partner that doesn't understand that their role with us is to continue to bring forth what it takes to do black generational wealth. Full stop. You start where we are. We're about impact, right? There's community, commerce, and capital that are all a part of that. But we, they play a role in creating the capacity for us to get black to where it needs to be economically. And if they didn't want to do that, they're not with us. And you will see a change in partners. For those who have been to the festival quite a few times, mm -hmm. there's some different logos. There's some logos you've seen that ain't there. There's some logos you've seen before that are there differently. Mm -hmm. And that was very intentional on our part. And I think if you were to talk to the corporate community, including my former company, what you would hear is Essence came different because we are different and we were unafraid 
to, to not fight for our value. And we made sure that you were talking the talk if you wanted to be in relationship with us. It's no longer a financial exchange. Let, it's an investment in impact. Let's stay there for a second. Yeah, please, how, how can these corporations start to be more inclusive? Well, I wouldn't use the word inclusive. Mm. I know what you mean by the question. We're about black. Mm -hmm. I want to be really clear about that. I was a former corporate chief diversity officer, right? So I know what the word inclusion means. I understand what the diversity work is. What, what is I, I don't want to veer you up, but what does it mean in corporate America? It means that we make sure that all parties have equal and equitable presence, whether mm -hmm. that be about in roles, in levels, in products, depending mm -hmm. on what your business is, right? But the thing that comes with that is it is all. So I couldn't just focus on black. Right. I had to make sure that women gotcha. and Asian and right. Like you have gotcha. to make sure it's not the paths are different. Mm -hmm. But no matter what in the corporate diversity world, everybody still swivels a little different in their chair. When you talk about black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We talk about other groups and everybody's like, yep, we're there. We talk about black and they're like, well, but <laughs> well, how do we well, how will we explain? Right. And, and I, I know it because I lived it. Right. And so part of what we part of what we're being really clear about, this isn't about being inclusive. This isn't about investing in diversity. This isn't about selling more products. This is about black. And we are not going to dilute that. You need to be unafraid to say black, do black, invest with black, preserve black, defend black, pay black, do black, all black. Absolutely. And if you are not about that, there are other partners that would be happy to take <laughs> your money. But it's not us. And I am so, I can't speak to how passionate I am about that, having existed in the diversity space that I did. And yes, we did a lot of things for black folks, but we are about making sure that blackness is returned to greatness. And the first step in that is not allowing anybody to come in and engage with us if they are not going to participate in the hard, difficult, no room for self-preservation work of standing in the gap for those of us that are black, not mm. because we can't stand in the gap for ourselves, but because they're the ones in the gap and we need them to get out of the way so we can get to what we're supposed to do. And God Carolyn, damn. I want to... And you know, I think wow. that it's really important for us to also talk about you personally and your yeah. background because you did bring up your 15 years at Target. You started off as an intern there. I did. And so I just want you to talk a little bit about your journey, even coming yeah. in to Essence. What made you leave Target to come to Essence and then being interim CEO and then becoming the CEO? So I just want you to give us a little background on you just so people know who I Carolyn. can. I can. So the first thing that's most important to say is I'm a Kenyan girl, born in Kenya, uh, raised in Kenya, came to the U.S. In Kenya? Um, so I was born in Kisumu. But I lived in Nairobi. My parents were professors at Kenyatta University. I just left Nairobi, but go ahead. Look at you. I see it in you. See, look at you. Just a little brighter. But um, he's, from the, he's the, Dominican, man. I'm, I am not Dominican. I'm black. He says I'm Dominican, so I'm like, and I'm black. Well, you could be all. Black and Dominican. Yes. Yeah, you could be and light skin. You, you could, could be, be all everything. Those I see you. I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. He's black, damn it. Um, so, so I'm a Kenyan girl. Came to the U.S. because my dad wanted to do his Ph.D. Ended up in Minnesota. Topic for another day. Mm -hmm. um, and so, after I graduated from high school, I became a mom. I became a mom before I was a legal adult. Mm. Seventeen and years old. Seventeen years mm. old. And you can imagine, just like any other parent would feel, there was concern, right, about what was I doing to my path, right, with with that moment happening, and and my daughter and I lived that life together but for me what i was indignant about was ensuring that people understood that they didn't need to renegotiate my potential without my permission i just had to figure out a different way to get to the path that i did but that meant i was a mom from 18 and so i had a career in nonprofit doing youth development programs because the summer camp i used to work i had a job open so i could take care of this little girl and then i couldn't get to another level in that organization and i told i had to go get my degree so i went to a hbcu down in texas that had a single parent program to get my degree. So which one is that? Texas College. It's very small. Okay. It's at 1,800 people, but um, it was a school that had done a single parent program where they subsidized mm -hmm. the cost of your child living in the dorm with you, your child eating in the cafeteria that's so you amazing. could go to school. And that's what HBCUs are, right? They solve the problems that society doesn't that's solve dope. so that we can get to what we're supposed to. I'm not here without that school mm -hmm. and that program, full stop. That's why I started with Target. So I started as an intern in their distribution center in Tyler, Texas, I decided to sell out and become a corporate drone so I could take care of this baby <laughs> and make sure she could pay for college. To be honest, I had no desire to go into corporate America. I thought I was gonna be a nonprofit girl for the rest of my life. 
But when Cadence came, that's my daughter's name, like it was that. And so everything else was worth it. So I started in supply chain in the booming metropolis of Tyler, Texas, um, in that. And then I ended up coming to headquarters in Minnesota. So that brought me back to Minnesota. And I did a number of different roles in engineering uh, from a distribution perspective. I was over in business intelligence. I did some roles in HR. I My last role in that 15 years was chief diversity, inclusion, and culture officer for the organization. I was definitely one of those people that because I had been a mom that long, I had lost sight of who I was. My daughter graduated from high school, went to NYU, I ended a 10-year relationship, and I was sitting at home like, who is this in the mirror? I have no idea who she is, because she gave up everything to be Cadence's mom, and was really in a life moment where it was like, I got to figure out who I am and what I want to do. And the diversity job really gave me an opportunity to find my own authenticity in that. And so I was open to what other opportunities could be. I was talking to people within Target. I was talking to people outside of Target. And even though Rich Lou Dennis and the Dennis family had the Shea Moisture brand that had worked with Target for 15 years, he and I had never met. We met at the 2019 festival. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was asked to come and host a panel. And that was the first time I met him. And I would go to things that he would invite me to thinking I'm looking for partnerships for Target. And when he asked about this opportunity to come to Essence, first I thought he called the wrong number, then, what became true that I now know that wasn't as clear then is it was because of the way that I lived my life that he wanted me to come and help lead this brand. The journey to authenticity, being that honest black girl who I'm going to find my purpose in this world and those that don't want to go on the journey don't have to. The work that I did to work on my authenticity in a corporate sector, my personal passion for people living in their authenticity and being able to find that and fulfill their purpose in the world is what the opportunity came from. Why did I take it? It was a journey in recompense. And mm -hmm. here's what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. Two very important things happened that made this the absolute right thing at the absolute right time. I had the opportunity to join a group of people that went to Ghana for the, for the Full Circle Festival. I had talked with my dad about being excited about going because I knew my Kenyan heritage. I'd known it from the beginning. My dad told me all those stories, mm -hmm. right? It was undisrupted by the slave trade on the Eastern Coast. I was excited to go to Ghana because the remnants on the coast there of the transatlantic slave trade were something I didn't see in Kenya. And I was excited to see that. So I was talking to him about that and he paused and he said, well, there was another slave trade that happened on the eastern coast of Africa that doesn't have a lot of history behind it because it took slaves to Asia, but they weren't allowed to procreate. And so it didn't last as long. He said, so our heritage did interact with slavery in Kenya. And I was like, well, Dad, you said it wasn't disrupted. And he says, well, the Wangas did what they had to do to survive, which wow. meant participate in the enslavement of other Kenyans. Mm. Wow. And we've heard the stories, right? right? We know the stories. But for 40-something years, y'all, I didn't know that story. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't lie to you about how heavy that sat on my spirit. And I just remember saying over and over, I'm going to fix this. I don't know how I'm going to fix this. So when I arrived in Ghana and spent time at the slave dungeons, I had a complete total meltdown, a complete and total meltdown. I knew what was going on. And so a few months later, and I remember going back to Target and I was talking to the CEO there and I said, I got to fix this. I told him this story. And so when, when Rich called a couple months later, this was the fix this. Mm. I have benefited from that story all the way up through my corporate career from people who came before me that look like me, that sacrificed, that fought, that did. I can't not do what I'm supposed to do to continue to maintain one of the catalysts of that, which is this brand. And so between where I was in my life, where I was really embracing who is Caroline and a moment where I understood something different about my heritage, accepting this role as an act of service. It's recompense for those that fought before, for me to be able to get to where I got to in corporate and then to have another opportunity to do this with one of the biggest global black media brands. But also, it is to give the opportunity for Io, my niece, and all the kids coming after to have another place that will tell them how great they are. I'm here out of service, not out of a job. Wow. Wow. I love that. Wow. wow. So so I, I know the theme is uh, black. It's the black joy for me. Yeah. How do you define black joy? 
living out everything that you are going to do in this world. And I know that sounds a little fluffy, but it's honest, right? Um, I think it's Mark Twain that said the two most important days in your life is the day you were born and the day you find out why. I think there's a lot of people who were born. I think there's very few who know why. And so when I talk about the Black Joy for me and what the festival represents with that, the idea is that if we can get you to be in the safest place to be black, celebrating our culture, driving equity, and doing celebration like nobody else does, then you take down all of those walls that get in the way of the uncomfortable work of discovering what you were put on this earth to do, and you're able to put on armor from the other black people that are there with you to go after and pursue the purpose you were born to do. Because I believe that if you don't get to your purpose, the world goes without, because nobody else can do it. Mm -hmm. And I know the liberation of living on the other side of owning that and how powerful, protecting, embracing, beautiful, and empowering it is. So when I talk about the black joy to me, giving people permission to live in their black joy unlocks the safety to go on the purpose journey that is sometimes scary but necessary. And as long as you've got the joy that we bring to community together, whether it's a car show, right, a concert or anything else, then you have the right armor and community around you to go after what you were born to do and give it to the world in the way that we're supposed to receive it. So it's the black joy for me is the start of helping everybody find their purpose because we can live at the intersection of joy and justice. We can party with a purpose. We can do all of those things together. We just have to do it in a place that we feel safe. And there isn't a safer place than what we bring to festivals. Wow. I well, feel like this is going to be the festival. biggest, best one ever. It is. I, I know it is. It is. It's a culture, it is. not just a concert. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely head out there if you can. I'll be Please out there do. with Shea Moisture. Uh, I think I'm DJing for Shea Moisture. Me and my wife are signing books, our, our new book in the Shea Moisture book. I love that. Yeah, you got I, the, don't you have, a, you have a book? We do. We have too, Essence right? Authors. Mm -hmm. So there'll be space there for Essence Authors. We've got Global Black Economic Forum. We've got all kinds of different things going on. Yeah. EssenceFest.com. If you mm -hmm. don't know what you want to do, go down there. We'll show you the whole schedule, and we look forward to seeing Seven. everybody yeah, there. My, for everyone My partner, there. Anita Kopax, is going to be there with her book, Shallow Waters. So yes. She's one of the Essence and we authors. want to continue to highlight as many folks as we can through this festival. So folks that have interest in this, even if you didn't get on this timing, please continue to stay in contact with us. We continue to try to make sure that everybody gets an opportunity to show what they're doing at this thing we call the festival. Absolutely. That's right. I'll be there Wednesday to Monday. I'm going to be yes. there before it starts. <laughs> Some people took 30 days off for their yeah. job and claimed it was a holiday. I'm not going to bust none of them out. <laughs> uh, I can't well, thank wait. you so much for thank joining you. us and Absolutely. sharing your story. Thank I can't you. wait to be out there. Absolutely. Yeah. For those of y'all coming, I'll see you there. All right. Okay. Caroline Wonga. Did I say it right? You did. All right. And uh, we'll see you at the festival. Yes. And you got to come see us more, like even not just the festival. I live in New York. Yes. I really. I'll come by whenever. Yeah, come I do. Through. I'm here. We can have conversations because we're also a year-round brand, right? So we can talk about this thing called black and get it back to great, right? There we mm. go. Right. Well, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.